Hey everybody, Chris the Old Ass Retro Gamer here, back again with another massive epic pickup video. So this is everything that I have picked up since the beginning of the year. Got another bonus from work, was able to get a lot of really cool stuff on top of a couple of really cool circumstances that took place before the Midwest Gaming Classic. So sit back, relax, this was gonna be long. Promises, promises. So I've talked about it in a lot of my videos that there is a store that is in downtown Chicago called People Play Games. Uh, it's a retro video game store. The people there are really cool and everything. And at the end of February, early March, they announced that they were going to be closing down. They decided to have a massive sale, try to clear out their inventory. So everything was 10% off in the store. And because I visit the store so often, one particular clerk who will remain nameless saw me walk in and says, hey, you know what? You've come here a lot and you know, you've spent a lot of money with us over the years. I'll give you 25% off. And there's some other really cool circumstantial stuff that I'll bring up once I get there. One of the things I did pick up at the store was this awesome Mortal Kombat Armageddon display. They had it on the store floor. It's been there ever since I started going to the store back in 2012-ish. I asked them if they were willing to part with it, and they were, and I got it for about $30. Super happy with it because I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan, as you well know. There are two companies which I absolutely adore when it comes to the 2600, and that is Activision and that is Imagic. I had a lot of their games growing up as a kid, and I wanted to recollect as many of those as I possibly could, so while I was at People Play Games, I said, now's the time. Keystone Capers. This was designed by Gary Kitchen. He was at the Midwest Gaming Classic. I did bring this to have him sign, but I never did get to meet him. Really cool sort of action platformer where you play as a bunch of cops trying to catch a bunch of criminals running around a mall. Stampede, another awesome Activision game. It is just what it sounds like. You are a cowboy and you are lassoing cattle. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because they were playing freeway. <laughs> And that is exactly what this game is. It is the chicken crossing the road. It's like Frogger with a chicken. Also picked up Fathom, which is an awesome game I never had back in the day by Imagic. There's a bunch of different things going on in this. You have to rescue this mermaid princess and you play as a dolphin and a seagull. I watched some footage on YouTube and it looked rad, so I was not gonna pass up picking this one up. Demon Attack, which is a rad clone of Galaga. Star Voyager, which reminds me a lot of Star Raiders, which is like a first person spaceship shooting game. Firefighter. Self-explanatory. Dragonfire, never had this one back in the day, but from what I can tell, it looks a lot like Kroll. And Kroll is one of the best 2600 games in my opinion, so had to have it. Atlantis, which was probably one of my all-time favorite games for this console back in the day. It's like Missile Command, but instead of missiles coming down and destroying your bases, there's spaceships that are flying by overhead. You have three different guns that you can choose from to shoot them with before they can bomb your city. It's awesome. Also picked up Dark Chambers. Never played this one before. It is actually still sealed. I wanted to get this one because when I looked at the back of it, when I was perusing the store, I said, wow, that looks a lot like Temple of Apshai, which is a game that I used to play a lot back in the day on my dad's Atari computer. So had to have it. Space Jockey, it's a shmup. Uh, I had this in cartridge form only a long time ago and uh, decided to upgrade it while I was there. Space Cavern, this is a vertical shmup. It's okay, I remember having this back in the day and thinking it was just all right. Got this massive Star Raiders. Look how big this box is, y'all. Because it comes with not only the game in its own box, but a special touchpad controller that you absolutely need to play the game. Kind of like an Intellivision controller that has this overlay that goes over the controller to tell you what the buttons are gonna do when you play the game. I remember having this back in the day and I absolutely loved it. Saw it there for about $10 and I said, yeah, in this form, need it. Return of the Jedi, Death Star Battle. Journey Escape, I had this back in the day, didn't really know anything about Journey at the time. I wasn't really big into music when I was a little kid. You play as like the Beatle that's on the cover of the Journey Escape album and just stuff is coming down the screen at you and you need to avoid it. Like crazy fans and cars and all this kind of stuff. It's kind of weird, but I always had a fun time with it. Airlock, this was one of my favorite games when I was a kid. It's by a company called Data Age. They also did Journey Escape. It's kind of like a platformer, kind of like Donkey Kong, but you're like in a submarine that's sinking. It's a lot of fun. It's very simple, but like the Atari 2600 games were not complicated at all, except maybe those sword quest games. <laughs> this one was always a favorite, as was Megaforce, based on an extremely cheesy movie from the early 80s that I absolutely adored. Remember the one with the motorcycles that shot out all the different colored smoke to let the bad guys know that they were coming to kick their ass? Made no sense, but it was awesome and fun and featured the bald girl from Star Trek The Motion Picture. 
but it's a really cool shmup. You drive one of the motorcycles that can actually fly as well as ride on the ground, and you're just basically shooting everything that comes at you, kind of like Defender. And if you remember, I talked about that there was a copy of Alien for the 2600 at the Midwest Gaming Classic that I was putting off buying until Sunday, and when I got there on Sunday, someone had already bought it. Well, I got one off the internet. You secure that shit, Hudson. It's a Pac-Man clone with aliens in it and face huggers. Star Wars Jedi Arena. You might remember that I talked about this in my bad Star Wars games video. Yeah, it is a piece of crap, but I want to get all the Star Wars games. So, had to do it. Didn't pay a whole lot for this either. It was like $6. Complete. Did you even know that there was a game based on Major League out in Japan? I didn't. Found this randomly on eBay, and it was pretty cheap. Uh, there was a seller in Japan who actually I got all these games from that I have in my hand here. It's not really based on the movie. It is a generic baseball game that just has the Major League license slapped on it to sell some copies. There is no wild thing. There is no crazy love affair between Tom Berenger and Rene Russo, and definitely no you, Jobu. I do it myself. Another weird license game that we didn't get in the U.S. King Kong 2. This is based on King Kong Lives. The sequel to the 70s King Kong movie that had Jeff Bridges in it. Where King Kong is given an artificial heart transplant and then goes off looking for a Kong female to mate with. Yes, that's a real movie. And they made a game out of it, apparently. <laughs> and you know what? Konami did this and it is actually really, really fun. If you were to take the stealth out of Metal Gear and insert King Kong, that's the game that you have. The music is rad, the gameplay is awesome. I'm surprised they did not release this over in the States. It's probably because of a licensing issue. Kind of like why we never got this one in the States. Star Wars. No, this is not the version that we got in the United States for the NES. That one was released by JVC. This one was actually developed and released by Namco. And it is completely different. It is its own thing. And it actually is closer to the movie than the version that we got in the US. Except for the parts when you fight Darth Vader and he turns into a big scorpion. Outside of that, it's actually pretty fun. It's about as good as the US version. Yeah, I had to have this because all the Star Wars games. If you weren't aware, I was in a collaboration with John Riggs over on his channel talking about Famicom Disk System games. He's a huge fan of that console, as am I, and because I have a decent sized collection of it, he wanted to do a collaboration where we talked about games that we liked for the system. These two that I picked up, I talked about in his video. Ultraman and Gall Force Eternal Story. Ultraman is a side-scrolling platformer slash beat-em-up. You play as a little human character that goes around shooting creatures and whatever that's coming at you, and then if you collect enough icons, you can power up and turn into Ultraman, where you can start to take on these big kaiju bosses that are all over the place. It's actually pretty cool. A little tough. Gall Force is, I think, based on an anime, but it is a vertically scrolling shooter that is super fun, has some really cool mechanics to it, like your ship can actually take three hits total before it's destroyed. It is not one hit kills. You have like these wings on the side of your ship that can take a hit and once they get hit they get destroyed and once both of them are gone your main ship is exposed and if that gets hit it's dead. And as you complete levels you collect characters and each one of them can upgrade your weapon so all of a sudden you can have a spread shot or you can have these really powerful lasers and whatever. Really fun game, it is also extremely tough. I made a real effort to get a lot of the really heavy hitter ones that I've been wanting for the longest time off my list, and I managed to get quite a few of them, even a few that I talked about in one of my most recent videos. Obviously the sequel to the original Hudson's Adventure Island, more of the same, although it is a lot more polished than the first one. Batman Returns, a fantastic beat-em-up for the NES by Konami. The Super Nintendo version is way better, but this one is actually pretty cool. The Three Stooges was not really planning on getting this one, but I found it at a local store for about $4, still in the box complete so I said sure why not same with xenophobe it's a port of an arcade game that I never really could get into I thought it was kind of cool design wise and I liked the fact that it was kind of ripping off aliens but I can never really get into it because it was just really really hard and I didn't remember how hard it was until I started playing this NES version and I was like god damn you're an idiot not a great game at all but it's, it's okay. Dash Galaxy and the Alien Asylum. Another game I had absolutely zero intention of buying until I went to a half price books and I saw this complete in box for $5 on their shelf. Was not gonna pass that up. The same with Kid Nicky, Radical Ninja. I always loved this game as a kid. I know there's a whole slew of sequels that were available for the Famicom in Japan, but I could never find this for a good price. And then a new half price books opened up near my hometown. I went there with a couple of friends and this was in their case for $20. Yes. Snagged all three double dragons. I couldn't believe that I didn't own any of these games prior to this, but it just always ended up slipping through my fingers. I'd be like, hey, there was one on eBay. I'll go and pick it up tomorrow when I get paid and it would be gone. 
and the sequels seemed out of reach as well. They always seemed really expensive. Yeah, I happened to find them all around the exact same time. What a quinky, but you know, whatever. I'm not gonna complain because these games are a lot of fun. I've never played the third one though, so I'm looking forward to trying that one out. Fist of the North Star. I've always loved the anime and the manga that this game is based on. It's one of my favorite super gory and violent post-apocalyptic storyline that I absolutely adore. Not the greatest game based on that license at all. I mean, it's not bad. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up with platforming elements. It could have been a lot better. The versions that came out for the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 were way better. The Guardian Legend, which is a game I've always liked, never had a chance to buy it back in the day. Managed to snag it off of eBay pretty cheaply because there's like a label on the front here that I'm probably not going to be able to take off. I'll try. Two different play styles. It's half shooter and half like Legend of Zelda adventure game. Super rad. Love the music and the gameplay. It's fantastic. Joe and Mac, it's an 8-bit port of the Caveman Ninja arcade game. The Super Nintendo version is closer to the arcade than this is, but what do you expect? It's for the Nintendo. Doesn't mean that it is not fun, because trust me, it is. If you remember my 10 game series that I never played, but how I'm looking to make up for that video that I made, one of the franchises that I've always wanted to play were those NES Advanced Dungeons and Dragons games. And after I made that video, I made a real effort to get a couple of them. Heroes of the Lance and Dragon Strike. Heroes of the Lance is the one that I remember the most from back in the day. This is the one that I remember my friends had for the Commodore 64. It's like a side-scrolling action RPG. And the other one is Dragon Strike, which I knew nothing about before buying it. It's kind of like Dragon Spirit, an advanced Dungeons and Dragons shmup as a dragon, yes please. And I also managed to pick up a couple of repros, one of which I got from Shantendo64. Bring your channel back, dude, please. Summer Carnival 92 Rekka. This is an awesome, awesome shmup that is super freaking hard, but it has great mechanics. The controls are super tight. But the thing that is the most notable about this game is the music. I do believe this used one of those special sound chips that like Castlevania 3 had in Japan to allow more advanced sounds to be coming out of these cartridges. And it shows because the music in this game is absolutely fantastic. Hard as balls, but super fun shmup. I was so thrilled to get my hands on this. You have no idea. Earthbound Beginnings. This is actually the original Mother game. The one that we know as Earthbound for the Super Nintendo is actually Mother 2. And Part 3 was released on the Game Boy Advance. This is a repro by the Video Game Database or VGDB in Retro City. Complete in box, comes with everything, manual, cartridge, everything, and it's actually still sealed. I have yet to play this. I need to set aside some time so I can play through all three of the games in the series. Spoiler alert. I don't know if this is a translated version of the original Mother for the Famicom, or if this is like a rip of the version of the game that was released for the Wii U on the eShop. So we'll find out once I start playing it. Double Dragon, everyone tells me that this is the best port of this particular game for any of the home consoles. I've never played the Genesis version, so we shall see. Ken Sidon, this is a side-scrolling action game. Not my favorite, it's really clunky and doesn't control very well, so not my favorite purchase out of this group. Unlike the Ninja, which is a pretty rad Ikari Warriors clone, you swap out soldiers with a ninja. It's awesome. Penguin Land, which is a platformer puzzler, and the big one is another game by Cygnosis that I had to add to my collection because of that fact alone, and that is another port of Lemmings. I know there's one also for the NES, I'll probably add that to my collection at some point in the future, and it plays very well for an 8-bit version of this game. I was pleasantly surprised. As you've seen this motif popping up in this video, I had to get all the Star Wars games, so I picked up Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi for the Game Boy, a port of the Super Nintendo version of this game. Not the greatest version of this game, I still prefer the Super Nintendo version completely. And because I have to have all the Mortal Kombat things, Mortal Kombat 2, not a good port of this game. The only Sega Genesis games I managed to get were repros, which I also picked up from Shantendo64. Undead Line, which, just like the Ninja that I talked about earlier, is an Ikari Warriors clone. Not that I'm complaining, it is super fast, frantic, and it is a lot of fun. Vixen 357, which is a strategy RPG, looked really cool, and I checked out some gameplay footage of it online, and I said, that looks like it's right up my alley. And the big one is Golden Axe 3. I now have all three Golden Axe games for the Genesis. This one was never released in the US for whatever reason. Sega was weird. The first two were super popular. Why wouldn't they release this? But it is more of the same, just with a lot of different characters to play as. One of which is a cat man. It is fun. Don't get me wrong.
If you remember in my previous pickup video, I was talking about how I wanted to get all those strike games for the Super Nintendo. You know, there was Jungle Strike and Desert Strike. Well, I got the third one and that is Urban Strike. Basically, it's the exact same gameplay as the previous games, but this one is in an urban setting. Duh! Traded in my Genesis version of this game for the Super Nintendo one, and that's the Lion King. This is the version that I had back in the day. Wanted to get it back, never played the Genesis one. I don't like the music on the Genesis one or the graphics. It just looks really plain. This one is way more colorful. The music sounds way closer to what was in the movie. I mean, it still has a way to go, but this is the one that I wanted, so yeah. Darius Twin. It's an awesome side-scrolling shmup that I've always wanted. I always wanted to play this one back in the day, but I never had the opportunity to even rent it. Robofish game. Remember when I said that I picked up those three Double Dragon games for the NES at roughly the same time? Well, I also picked this up. Double Dragon 5. This is not a good game. Unlike the other ones, this is actually a one-on-one -on -one fighting game and not a beat-em-up, which is pretty cool, I will admit. I remember back in the day, I was really thrilled that they were going in a new direction to try to keep the franchise fresh. This is actually based on the cartoon TV show that was on at the same time, which I remember being absolute garbage, just like the live-action movie. <laughs> It's Double Dragon. I said, why not? Ultima, the False Prophet. Old school PC rpg -ness on the Super Nintendo. I have a soft spot for Ultima, even though I never really played them back in the day, but my father did. My father was like obsessed with these games when I was young, playing them all for the PC over and over again. He had the graph paper and was mapping out everything, the dungeons, the overworld. It kind of rubbed off on me. So one of my goals is to get all these Ultima games for these home consoles if I can. Uh, a couple of them are kind of pricey, but we'll see. Got Breath of Fire from Shantendo64. He was selling some of the games in his collection, and I snagged this from him. And it did not come with the manual or the map, but I did find those on eBay pretty cheaply, which surprised the hell out of me. Never played the original games in this series for the Super Nintendo, and now I can. But they are strategy RPGs from what I remember. Some of the games that are on this cartridge that I have here are pretty expensive, so I figured this would be the cheap alternative to buying them all separately. It's a compilation of all the Joe and Mac games by this company called Retrobit. Joe and Mac, Congo's Caper, and Joe and Mac 2 Lost in the Tropics all on one cartridge. The only problem is, this does not work on my Retro Freak at all. It kind of half loads, and then when you select the game that you want to play, it never really loads that at all. So I had to break out my real Super Nintendo and play it on that, and they work perfectly fine. Also saves a little bit of space on my shelves. Instead of having three games, I've got them all combined in one. There was a person on Facebook who was selling a lot of really expensive Super Nintendo games one day, really cheaply, that I happened to snag before anyone else could, and that was... Soul Blazer. This is an NX game. This is one of the games in... I can't remember what the name of the series was. Nintendo Joel told me what it was the other day, and I cannot remember for the life of me what it was. I'll put it right here. Uh, but it is this game, Illusion of Gaia, and Terranigma. Now I have all three, and I can play through them all! One of my next gaming goals is to play through all three of these games and probably document it on Facebook or even the channel. We'll see. And the other game was Axelay, which is a vertically scrolling shmup by Konami. I had this back in the day, but I could never get anywhere in it because it is super freaking hard. But the cool thing about it is the graphics are freaking amazing. And instead of just being a vertically scrolling shooter where the ships are just going straight up, it is actually kind of a three-quarter view where it is kind of angled toward the background and you are always moving over a surface like a planet or whatever and things are kind of curving over the horizon towards you. It is really cool to see in action. And the last game for the Super Nintendo is another repro. I picked this up off of somebody on Etsy, Star Fox 2. It was basically finished, but it was never released because Nintendo was like, oh, well, our Nintendo 64 is going to be coming out pretty soon. We don't want this to overshadow what we have coming out for that console because there was going to be a Star Fox 64 coming out and they decided to just completely shelf this for no reason. This is actually the version that was released on the Super Nintendo Classic. You know, that little mini Super Nintendo that everyone was fighting over for about three months. Somebody ripped it off of that console and burned it onto a cartridge. And the cool thing about this is it has all the bells and whistles. It obviously comes in its own box. It's on this awesome purple metallic cartridge, has an instruction booklet, a replacement label, just in case, a poster, and a soundtrack on CD. And for the price that this guy who was making these was selling them for, I was not going to pass it up because I had no interest in buying a Super Nintendo Classic. Still don't, just to play this one game. Uh, so this was the logical alternative for me. 
Two of which I picked up at People Play Games when they were closing. One of them I thought, why not? It's for a sport that I actually enjoy playing in video game form, and that is NHL All-Star Hockey. Complete in box for $2, not passing that up, and that was not counting the 25% off. Also picked up Shinobi. Like I talked about in the last pickup video where I showed off Shinobi 2, the Silent Fury for the Game Gear that I picked up, that one was the one that was expensive for the longest time on the Ebays and uh, I wasn't going to pick it up, and I kept on putting off buying the first one, which was cheaper, and then for some reason at one point in time they flip-flopped, and now part one is the really expensive one, and the second one is the one that you can get pretty cheaply. With that 25% off that I got at People Play Games, I said, yeah, time to do it. Yeah, pull the trigger. For a Shinobi game on a handheld, this and the sequel are pretty fun. And the last one is the one that I remember being awesome back in the day, and now that I play it, I'm really disappointed in it. And it is a port of Streets of Rage. This was one of the first games I bought for the console when I picked it up when I graduated from high school. And man, I play it now and it is so choppy and the controls are really bad. And it's like frustrating to play. The music sounds pretty cool. It's like a toned down version, like an 8-bit version of the music by Yuzo Koshiro. It's just not that fun. Second one though, I still want to get. I want to get them both because I'm a Streets of Rage fanatic. I really am looking forward to adding the second one to my collection because I hear that one is way better. <laughs>